before I uh, introduce uh, Haim Saban, who's going to introduce our, our honoree, just a few words about Endeavor. Endeavor, as you know, is now 12 years old. And it's interesting to see some of our most mature countries, and, and I want to contrast it with, with some of our youngest. And I just want to give you a, a few facts to give you a sense of how this is working and how this is progressing. So in Argentina, uh, we had some remarkable things uh, happen this year. First of all, Argentina, which was the first country that was started for Endeavor, now, now it's, the entrepreneurs in, in Argentina now do over $600 million of revenue, have created over 16,000 jobs. More than 50% of all the funds that support Endeavor Argentina now come from the entrepreneurs originally supported by Endeavor Ar Argentina. And uh, the, uh, the original chairman of Endeavor Argentina uh, has retired, and one of the earliest entrepreneurs that we supported, who's done very well for himself, uh, is now the new chairman of Endeavor Argentina. So, Andy Frere is actually here tonight. Andy, you want to just quickly stand up and I can say thank you for, where are you, Andy? You know, when Peter and Linda started uh, Endeavor, and actually uh, up until a few uh, years ago, uh, there was no word in the Spanish or Portuguese languages for entrepreneur. The word simply didn't exist. So imagine how alien to the culture entrepreneurship is in those communities. And it was so interesting to have one of our board members from Chile yesterday say that uh, there's a presidential election happening in Chile and for all three candidates that are running, entrepreneurship is the core of their presidential economic growth platforms. It's extraordinary what's happened, and really it is due to Endeavor. And the last thing I'll tell you about our more mature countries is a remarkable thing in Brazil. Uh, in, in Brazil, every year, uh, O Globo, which is the leading newspaper in Brazil, uh, recognizes the person most important to the Brazilian uh, economy. Uh, and in 2008 or 2009, uh, there were three uh, finalists. Uh, one was the CEO of Anheuser-Busch InBev, which that year had acquired Anheuser-Busch and become the world's largest, uh, uh, the world's largest uh, brewery company. The second was the chairman and CEO of Brazil's largest bank. And the third was the managing director of Endeavor Brazil. And the winner was the managing director of Endeavor Brazil. And then you contrast that with our newest affiliate, uh, Endeavor Jordan, and a number of members of the board of Endeavor Jordan are here, not only Peter Kellner, who spoke earlier, but our chairman, Ali al Husri and Fadi Gandur, uh, and Safwan Masri are, are all here, and thank you guys for everything that you do for Endeavor. But I want to tell you one quick story, which I, I hope will illustrate what it is we try and do with each and every entrepreneur. I was in Jordan, um, actually, at the at the Dead Sea, where we had the International Selection Panel. And by the way, after the International, in, 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 international Selection Panel, uh, I was making calls to people hoping that they would support this dinner, one of whom said to me, you're really calling me for the Dead Sea to ask me for money? I said, yes, I am. I, he says, how do I say no to that? You know? <laughs> but at the Selection Panel, we met a lot of very interesting entrepreneurs, one of whom is here, uh, 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 Dr. Aryan, uh, 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 Amjad Aryan, uh, and he is, has a really interesting story. And when, what happens when we're selecting entrepreneurs is that two executives uh, from anywhere in the world uh, will sit and listen to the story of an entrepreneur. We'll be part, those two will be part of a panel of a total of six. Uh, and six entrepreneurs will present to, to each pair 
uh, and then the panel will get together and ultimately decide. And I was sitting in a room with Ali Al Husri, the chairman of Endeavor Jordan, and uh, uh, Arm John came in, and he said, "You know, as he started his presentation, f first there was a, a chair, a chair for him to sit down, and he said, um, uh, I don't know how this works, but do I have to sit down?" And I said, "No, you can do whatever you want." He said, oh, "Okay, I'd rather stand up." He said, you know, in the Middle East, most men do what their fathers do, and my father was a pharmacist. So I was born in a pharmacy in Ramallah. And he talked about his life and how his father saved so that he could go to pharmacology, pharmacology college in Boston uh, and send him there, except he really only sent him with enough money for the air ticket and one year of college. So uh, Armjohn dropped out got a series of jobs, ultimately built a carpet cleaning business, uh, and uh, uh, sold that carpet cleaning business. Brought his brother and sister to Boston, all th and put them and himself through college. They all graduated the same year in, in different uh, uh, specialties within pharm pharmacy and pharmacology. Uh, and then went to, uh, Armjohn went to work for CVS. And he worked there, worked his way up to become a district manager moved down to Florida, bought a pharmacy with his brother, uh, bought a second one, but then thought, you know, there's really a need for something like uh, a CVS in the Middle East. Bought his first pharmacy uh, in 2001 in Jordan. Uh, moved his family uh, back to Jordan in 2004, where uh, he has now built the company up to 45 pharmacies. Uh, last year, he did $19 million of revenue. This year, he did he'll do $30 million uh, of revenue. And, yeah. And he now wants to expand outside of Jordan. Uh, and he said to me at, at a lunch before he was selected, he said, you know, he said, I know I've got a lot of revenue and it's more than a lot of Endeavor entrepreneurs, but I'm not too big for Endeavor, OK? Uh, but here's a guy who's going to be successful without us, but he's going to be much more successful with us because he, he needs help in managing his, his finances, he needs help with cash management, he needs help with expansion planning, he needs help with capital raising because to go into Saudi Arabia and other parts of the Middle East, he's going to need capital. What kind of capital, how much of the company he needs to give away for that capital, we're going to advise him. He needs mentors. He needs a proper board of directors. He needs a transparent legal structure. He needs all of those things in order to be successful. And we're going to give him all of that support. We're going to find him financial managers. We're going to mentor him. We're going to find uh, a board of advisors for him. We're going to help him raise the capital, et cetera. And that's what we do for each entrepreneur so that, th that whatever success they begin to have can expand and scale. And instead of employing 350 people today, it's uh, uh, his hope and mine that he'll be employing thousands and thousands and thousands of people within the next few years. He's here, and I'd like him to stand. Ar Ar Armjan, we wish you the best of luck. So that's what we do. Uh, and we do it countless of times in lots of places. And as we said in the video, we'll be in 25 countries by 2015, and in that year, we'll have created half a million jobs. Uh, and I want to now introduce one of the, one of the world's great entrepreneurs, uh, a, a great guy who started life, uh, actually, um, uh, I'll go back to that. I started life in an unusual way, actually, in the music industry. Uh, but he ended up creating an extraordinary brand called the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Some of you may have heard of that. Uh, he, 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 he sold that business extraordinarily well. Uh, he invested with Rupert Murdoch and the Fox Family net, uh, Network, sold that business extraordinarily well, uh, and now runs uh, the uh, Saban Group, which has uh, a, a lot of capital, which he's invested wisely. Um, I want to say a couple of things about Haim as a human being, though. First of all, he loves music. His first job, or his first business, was creating a, a music company in France back in 1975. So he's a man of great taste. Um, second, if you didn't think he was a man of great taste for that reason, he's married to one of the most beautiful, smartest, loveliest people in the world, his wife, Cheryl. Cheryl, thank you for being here. <laughs> and. 
And Heim uh, was with the investor group uh, that uh, was going to buy Warner Music uh, until he dropped out uh, with about 24 hours to go before we signed the uh, agreement. Given what's happened to the music business, you can understand why he's such a successful investor. <laughs> so without further ado, let me introduce one of the world's most decent, generous, uh, wonderful philanthropists and a great friend, Mr. Heim Saban.